So in this video we will try to implement viscoelastic um, simulation in Abacus. Specifically we will use a Maxwell model in Abacus. So let's try to explain what's going on. Remember that a viscoelastic material is a material that essentially behaves something in between an elastic material and a fluid. So in this video you can see how these viscoelastic materials respond under loads. So for instance, if the load is applied over the material fastly, in a fast way, it will behave as an, as an elastic material. Why? If you wait a little bit, this material will start flowing as a fluid. You can see in this video how this material or this piece of material bounces because the load is very fast but if you wait a little bit this material start flow as a fluid so that is the idea behind these viscoelastic materials a lot of materials while they are using are viscoelastic like polymers also a lot of materials are viscoelastic during manufacturing like metal during castings, like polymers during thermoforming, extrusion. These are some ideas behind viscoelastic materials. So, for this simulation in Abacus, we will use a Maxwell model. So, what is the ex exercise or the experiment here? We will use a creep experiment. In a creep experiment, we are interested in applying a stress over the material and see or track the deformation of the material. In this in this exercise we will use a piece of material. This is a a, cons, a square cross section material one centimeter times one centimeter is the cross section of this material and this material is ten centimeters long. We will apply a ten newtons force at one end and we will constrain the other end and see what happens with the deformation. The material model that we will use is a Maxwell model. Um, in a Maxwell model essentially you model the material as a spring connecting series with a dashboard. The spring is characterized by the stiffness this is the data for the stiffness, while the dashboard is characterized by the viscosity of the fluid. We have another properties of this material, other properties of this material, density, Poisson ratio, and so on. Essentially, in Abacus, you cannot directly apply a Maxwell model. You cannot select, let's say, Maxwell model and enter these characteristics. In Abacus, what you can use is use some sort of a generalized Maxwell model. A generalized Maxwell model is like a lot of spring and dashboards connected in parallel. So, this generalized Maxwell model is also called Prony, Prony series. So, if you can, if you want to um, Characterize this Maxwell model into Prony series. What you what will you will use is these characteristics: GI, KI, and also tau i. Tau i is the relaxation time, while GI and KI are the shear modulus in relation with the total. And shear modulus and the pulp modulus in relation with the total pulp modulus. I will explain how do you jump from these characteristic materials into this prony series expansion in a different video. Okay, the analysis is long, so I can jump, I can do that description in a different video. I will post the link to that video in the description of this video. So do not uh, worry too much about. How do you, you jump from this to this? Just see the video 
posted on the description. The goal in this simulation is to try to predict how much the material will increase after 150 seconds using abacus. Or what is the strain after 150 seconds? We get the strain after 150 seconds, then we answer this question. So at this point, let's jump into Abacus. Here is Abacus. We will start creating a part. Let's name the part is called part. 3D, the formable solid structure. Approximate size one, that's correct. Let's draw the, co the cross-section. Here, the size of the cross-section is 1 centimeter or 0 0.01 meters. 0 0.01 meters. We will use the unit of the international system. On. and we will extrude this essentially 10 centimeters, 0 0.1 so here is the part it's a good idea to save your simulation third simulation ok material, let's create the material it will be disco material general density the density, as we mentioned, is 1050. Mechanically, we will characterize this material as an elastic material. Young's um, modulus is 66 e to the power 6, or some ratio 325. This uh, Young's modulus is essentially instantaneous. Why? Because here, if you apply um, a deformation over this material, essentially you have to realize that this dashboard will behave as a rigid connector. So the only uh, the only element that will be working. Yeah, and the instant zero is E1. Okay, so that's why at time zero is essentially E1, the one that we work. So that's why here is at time zero is instantaneous, it's not at time infinite, it's not a term, it's instantaneous. Uh, we also characterize our material as a viscoelastic material in the time domain. You can use prony series, cryptic data, relaxation type data. All of these are phenomena related with this elastic material. We will use prony series. In prony series, we will use GI as 0.999, KI 0.999, Tau is 13 and 29. Okay, we have finished our material characterization. Let's jump into sections. We will create uh, maybe a viscous section. As this is solid, homogeneous, okay. Uh, okay, it's the only section. You need to assign that section to the part because we only have one part and one section. This is very straightforward. Let's create an assembly. Let's expand this assembly and create one instance. The only part this time is this piece of material, so it's dependent. Okay. And we will create a step and a step. In this step, we will apply the, the load of the force. So let's call this step a uh, creep step. The step is a general step, type is a visco type. This is very important. Continue the description. In this step, we apply 
add constant load. Time period let's change into 150 because we are interested in simulating what happened after 150 seconds. Let's jump into the incrementation tile. We will change this to fixed number of increments it could be 150 or maybe a little bit more maybe 200 and we will be increasing in the increment size size we will set to one so we will uh, advance at one second for each simulation okay what else Let's jump into the boundary condition. The boundary condition, um, we can keep this name. It's applied in the creep step, okay. Um, symmetry and castre continue. We will select an end of this material. It could be this end, done. This end essentially will be constrained, okay. So we have applied this constraint over one of the ends of this material. Let's apply a load. The load, what time of load we will apply it? We can apply a force, stress different, a concentrated force. We do not want that. We want to apply 10 newton force over this area, this extreme area. So we can select pressure and continue and select this area. What will be the pressure corresponding to 10 newtons over an area of a square of 0 0.01 meters times 0 0.01 meters? Essentially is minus one hundred thousand. Why minus? Because the pressure is always positive over this area. So if we set minus, essentially the pressure will be in the direction that we are interested in. You can see the arrows to see the direction of the force of the pressure distance. So this is equivalent. To 10 newtons, to hanging a 10 newtons weight over this, the same is applying a pressure of 100,000 pascals. Let's jump into the mesh generation. Into the mesh generation, we expand this disco part. We select mesh, so we are in the module in the mesh module. Uh, we will choose the element type here. We select this part done. In the standard, in the element library, we we select a standard uh, parts. Maybe we can jump into quadratic parts if if you want to interpolate uh, in a better way your results. Okay, let's size, let's click here into seat part. The seat part, essentially we will control how many parts or how you will discretize this problem. So let's do it a little bit, a little bit more and smaller these parts. Apply, okay, so you can manage the part. Okay, to merge the barriers. So it looks good. I am using the student version so I cannot discretize further more. And I will have I have some limitations with the number of nodes. So for me I think it's okay. So let's see if everything is correct. At this point we have finished all the pre-processing. Let's go into the processing part. So you will create a job. You can name this as disco job. Disco job. Okay. 
you can enter a description here. Click OK. This Visco job you can actually data check check if everything is okay. This Visco job. So the software we es essentially will check if everything is correct if you have set all the parameters that are required for this simulation. A message you can see here successfully completed. So right now we are ready to submit this job. So we will submit, okay. We will start running. We can monitor what is going on behind this. Um, essentially, we set increment of one step, and the simulation will will stop the moment that the simulation arrives to one fifty seconds. So one twenty one and one fifty. We do not have in this case warnings or errors, so it looks looks good. Simulation is completed. So let's jump into the results. So we can see the results here. You can plot the part, the deformed part, how it looks. Maybe you can also plot the contours using some colors. You can also animate this. How the material behaves after the simulation, uh, but we are interested in the strain of this material. So, what is the strain? Let's say in this point. So we can create some x data, x y data. We will load the output field here in the output field. You can select whatever you want to plot. This time I am interested in the strain, strain, strain in the, the set direction that corresponds to E32. Maybe you can select a node, edit selection. Let me choose this node. Okay. I want to see the strain over on this node. So I click plot. And you can see how the strain of in this node after some period of time. At the end at 150 seconds, essentially the strain is something like 3 to the power 3. 3 times 1, 3 times 10 to the power minus so let's compare these computational results with analytical results for this model so here I have the tutorial for all these steps and after we finish we will compare with analytical solution in an analytical solution for a Maxwell model you essentially have this differential equation to solve and uh, in a crib experiment if you enter this input this stress over time in, into this differential equation and you get the strain output you essentially get this uh, this equation the strain over time is essentially sigma zero the initial stress 1 over n, n is the viscosity, time plus 1 over e is the stiffness. All this data is available for our problem. You can complete this, all this data for this exercise, and you will get a, a string after 150 seconds of 3.26 exponential to the minus 3. That is something that we get in our simulation. So that concludes our video.